Now, everybody know a DUI ain't no good thing, drive it under the influence. But did you know a SUI ain't no better, sleeping under the influence? Well, listen to this tale, yeah, about drunken Jack the pirate. And you know this what I talking about. During the golden age of piracy, great pirate caravels plied the ocean up and down the Georgetown coast between Wilmington and Charleston. And one afternoon, a pirate ship sailed into Merle's Inlet in northern Georgetown County. They sailed into this quiet inlet, not to careen their ship to scrape the bottom, but to anchor off an uncharted island, an uninhabited island, to bury a treasure. And not a treasure of gold or silver, mind you, but a treasure of rum, a treasure that they could not be caught with, couldn't bear to part with, and wanted to imbibe of that very night. But it was far too much to drink all in one evening, so they wanted to bury the rest on this island. By afternoon, late, all the rum was buried and the pirates had begun to build their bonfires for the night's frolic was just beginning. By nightfall, many of the pirates had fallen out of, of imbibing of the rum. Many frolicked on until midnight, but one, Jack, had drunk his last just before sundown. He was last seen crawling on hands and knees behind some scrub oaks and palmetto fronds. That was the last anyone saw of him that evening. When Jack awoke the next morning, he was alone. He'd been left on the island. He had crawled off in such a wonderful hiding spot that no one had even seen him. Jack could scarce believe they had left him. He took out his spyglass and scanned the horizon. Surely the ship was still in sight. Surely they had noticed he was not present and were coming back for him. But the longer Jack looked, the more he realized they were not coming back for him. He put his spyglass away and got the shovel and dug up some rum and commenced to drink. <laughs> rum, rum, and more rum. It was his only sustenance those last few weeks of his life when the pirates came upon the island. Two years later, they found bottles strewn up and down the seashore where Jack had drunk his last. When they rowed ashore, there was no Jack to greet them. They'd known he'd be gone. Surely someone would have picked him up. Surely other ships had found this island too. But it was not to be. Jack was still there in the form of bleached bones. And many say, that if you go to Drunken Jack's Island, even to this day, you can hear it make the whistling sound as it does when it blew through Jack's bleached bones. <laughs>